about Remix Live Loader, which is a way that you can keep your data up to date across all of your clients. So let's run over the Remix lifecycle really quick. I know we've done this a million times, but here we go. You got your client in your server, and the client wants to get data. So it sends a get request to the server, the server runs all your loaders, and then it sends the data back to the client, and the client has the data. And if you want to update data, the client sends an action via a post request to the server, the server runs the action, sends the action response back, and then the client knows to revalidate, to get all of those loaders run again so that it has all the freshest data. We saw this happen this morning with the key note that Michael and Ryan did. But what happens when you have more than one client? And we run through that whole rigmarole again where we send the action, run the action, send the response back, and then it knows to revalidate, so it sends the request for the loaders, the loaders run, comes back. But now the other clients don't know about that. They don't know that that action happened, and so now their data is stale. We need some way for them to know that they need to update their data. Either they need to change routes, or the server can tell them that it is time for them to revalidate to get the freshest data. And that's what we're going to do with this hook. I call it Remix Live Loader. It replaces use loader data, but it makes sure that whatever route you're on is going to always have the most up-to-date data uh, possible. So here's how it works. You need three things for any kind of real time. The first is some kind of pub sub system, some way for the server to know to send messages to the client. In this example, I'm using nodes event emitter. Uh, you'll notice I've got my object called events that I'm able to call for the different events that can happen. So when an issue changes for like an issue tracker like linear, it's actually gonna trigger two different things on the event emitter. One for slash for the index route and one for slash issues slash issue ID. Uh, so anytime a client on one of those pages gets one of these messages, it's going to revalidate. That's the way that this works, is based on which route the client is currently looking at. Now, I want to add a little caveat. There's a number of things that you might want to do if you're doing this in production, like running it on an actual pub subsystem like Redis or Postgres or any number of SASs. But for our demo, this will work just fine. And then to trigger this in our action where we're going to be updating our issue, after we update the issue, we just call event.issue changed, and it's going to trigger any clients that are uh, currently subscribed to events for those two routes, slash and slash issue slash the issue that changed. The second thing that you need for real time is some kind of transport mechanism. WebSockets is a good option. We saw some very crazy options in the last, uh, in the last demo. We're going to use server sent events for this one. And take a note at where this server sent event loader is living. It's slash event slash splat. You can put anything you want after that. In this case, I'm actually putting the route that the client is currently attached to in that splat. So slash or slash issue slash two or whatever. And we pull that out in our loader. And then we're going to use the event stream object from Sergio's excellent remix utils uh, to create this event stream. We're listening to that event emitter, so any time we get one of those events on whichever route we're subscribed to, it's going to trigger our handler, which is just going to send the current timestamp down to the client to notify them that they need to revalidate. And that's the third thing that you need for real time, is what does the client do with this information? It could just pop up a notification. It could take a bunch of data that the, clients, or the server sends in that server sent event and update some client-side cache. In our case, we'll just revalidate. It's the simplest way to do things. It's the way Remix does things whenever actions happen on a client that fires the action. So we get our event name out of the use location hook. We subscribe to our server sent event loader using use event source, and we pass that route name that we're going to at the end there. And then we're going to use the re use revalidator hook to trigger those revalidations uh, whenever we get new data, so whenever that new timestamp comes in. And then so that we can replace use loader data with this hook, we just return use loader data at the very end. So here's a quick demo of how that works. I've got two Chrome windows open. One of them is on the index page, and you can see we're subscribed to the index events here. And the one of them's on an issue, a specific issue page here, and we're subscribed to the events there. So let's pull up the event stream for each of these pages so that we can see the events as they come in. And when I edit this individual issue, you'll see it will update on the one on the other side, and you'll see the events come in on both pages because both of them are subscribed to this particular issue. But then, on this side, I can actually change the priority. And when I change it for the issue we're looking at, it'll update in both places. But when I change it for a different issue, we're only going to see that update on the 
index page. We won't see it on the specific in, uh, issue because we're not updating that particular issue. So we only get the updates that we need, and it's going to revalidate those and make sure that all of the clients that care have the data that they need. So that's all that I have. If you want to see more about this, you can go to this GitHub URL. Uh, I wish it was easier to Google, but I just barely tried, and it's not. And uh, yeah, that's all that I have to share. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of RemixConf. <laughs>